Part of accepting is activating. Again, with a credit card, you get that thing in the mail, you've got to activate it. You get a cell phone, you have to activate it. A newborn baby is born and comes into this world with a set of lungs and these lungs are capable of taking in oxygen and feeding every cell of that baby's body. But that baby must take that first breath on its own to activate its own lungs. Do you understand what I'm saying? We are right now the perfect creations of God and yet we have to activate it. We get to activate it. In the scriptures, the term that is used, the aspect of our awareness that is used to talk about how to do this is called the Holy Spirit or the Holy Ghost. And if you remember, if you've ever read in, the, um, in Acts where it talks about all the disciples went up into the upper room and they became in one mind and one accord and then the Holy Spirit came down upon them. What is this Holy Spirit? What is this presence in our life that really enables us to activate the truth of who we are? I'm glad you asked. <laughs> the Holy Spirit is the activity in which we put the divine in us to use. The creative activity of God is the energy by which we express the divine in us. Charles Fillmore said another way to say it is the Holy Spirit activates God in us. The Holy Spirit activates God in us. What it requires is our acceptance, our capacity to work with this holy presence, this divine presence, this essential divinity that already is us. I read a few years ago where Pope John Paul said that sometimes he would wake up at night half awake and half asleep and he would be thinking about the cares of the world, the things that happen, and he said in his mind, he'd think, I need to tell the Pope about that. And then he'd wake up a little bit and he'd say, I am the Pope. <laughs> we activate when we begin to realize that we have the capacity to begin to make changes in every situation right here, right now. A friend of mine, when I first found Unity in Raleigh, North Carolina, this woman who sort of became my spiritual grandmother, her name is Susan, just took me under her wing and began to invite me to her house where they were praying and meditating and different things that at the time were new to me. I grew up and believed in prayer, but I really had not yet understood the power of affirmative prayer and the power of meditation. You see, to really activate this truth in your life, we must connect at a deeper level. Let me give you an example. If you want to have a healthy body, it is impossible to eat unhealthy contaminated food and never move your body, correct? Yeah, we all know that. You would atrophy, you'd die. Now let's talk about our spirit and our mind. It is your mind that has the capacity to be both local and non-local, here and somewhere else. Have you left this room since we've been in here? Has anybody drifted off since I've been talking? <laughs> so our mind is our connecting point for the divine within us and beyond us and among us everywhere. But if our mind every day is, re is receiving a steady flow of contaminated thoughts and beliefs, and if our mind, if we never get beyond the recycled thoughts of our mind, ask, tell me how healthy is our mind and our spirit going to be? It's going to be atrophying. Is that a word? It will atrophy. It will die. So to connect with the Holy Spirit is to take seriously to pray, to meditate, to go beyond your own thoughts, to go to that place beyond where the mind knows and thinks and sees, but to center yourself in the truth of God, in the truth of who you are, and to learn to direct your thoughts to just being aware. There's many, you can read many books and teachers to find how to do this. But to learn to go beyond our own thinking. The friend that I told you about, Susan, the spiritual grandmother who began to teach me this, I think she saw something in me that I didn't yet see at the time. And so one day she told me, 
because I believed in God. I believed I was a child of God, but she would say, honey, you need to activate it. You need to activate it. She sat me down one day. She said, I want to tell you about two of my friends. They're older than I am. So Susan was probably in her 80s. So that, that gave me the picture. She said, they're older than I am, and they stay at an assisted living home. Their names are Mildred and Rosa. And she said, one day Mildred and Rosa got out and they took the cover off their car and they hardly ever drived and they didn't see very well, but they got out one day because they wanted to go to the mall. And so Mildred and Rosa got in that car and they loaded that big Lincoln on the road and they started the drive. <laughs> and she said, Mildred was driving and Rosa was beside her and Rosa thought, I believe we just went through a, a red light. She said, well, I, I better pay attention. And they were talking and she thought, I think we went through another red light. Now I'm going to pay attention. And now she started paying attention and sure enough they did go through one. And she said, Mildred, you've gone through three red lights. And Mildred said, honey, am I driving? <laughs> <laughs> now why did Susan tell me that? She said, Darlene, you're driving. Don't leave home without it. Activate it. Take yourself deeper. Take yourself into prayer and meditation. Connect at a level that perhaps you have never yet connected. Here's the reminder for that one. Because from the time we wake up in the morning until we lie our head, lay our head down at night and go to sleep, we are directing our thoughts, our attention, our attitude. We're directing everything in our life. Every single waking hour is an opportunity to activate, to activate this presence. This week, I want this to make an impression with you so that every time you see a clock or think of time, you'll ask yourself, did I leave home without it? And right now, am I acting like I'm somebody else other than the truth of who I am? I allow time to remind me of my true nature together. I allow time to remind me of my true nature. We accept this offer we've pre-qualified. We activate it through our acceptance, through our intention, through where we direct our attention. We realize that this presence, this power within us is working for us, but it needs our conscious participation. It needs us to put ourselves in the driver's seat of our life and take responsibility. Don't beat yourself up. You're, you can't control everything that happened in the world, and everything that happens in the world we cannot call good. Amen? Amen. But can good come from everything that happens in the world? Yes, you bet you. And that's the difference. And that's where we come in. The third point is to put it to use. From Joel Goldsmith in An, Atti An Altitude of Prayer, he writes, The moment we have emptied ourselves of self and made room for the Spirit, the Spirit is there. Have you ever been so full of yourself you couldn't see anything else? <laughs> when the Spirit of God dwells in us, then do we become the children of God. So when does the Spirit of God dwell in us? Well, it has been dwelling in us from everlasting to everlasting. But from the moment of our acknowledgement of it, from our emptiness and our realization of it, it consciously begins to function in our life. And from the quest of prayer... As we seek through prayer to know God, our awareness of God as us increases and expands. And as prayer fills us more and more, we become more and more of the experience of being a part of God. We accept, we activate, we put it into action. There was a peasant farmer who had inherited about five acres of land. He had a small family and they worked this piece of land diligently. But all that it produced was some meager little potatoes and just enough stuff to barely get by. And he had been doing this year after year. He got a letter from his older brother who had gone to a distant country, another country, and he got a letter from his older brother and he said, My brother, guess what? While I was working my fields, I discovered gold. There's a gold mine here. I'm the happiest wealthy man you could imagine. 